Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pradeep Simha. So in today's topic, I'll be talking about human and machine teaming. And in this topic, I will discuss about how threat hunting with Relix XDR helps finding cyber criminals underground. To quickly introduce about myself, uh, I'm currently leading Trellix professional services architect team in US West region. And I'm also volunteering at Isaka Orange County chapter as vice president. And I'm also pursuing my PhD in cybersecurity. To talk about my past experiences, I have worked in healthcare, banking sector at US Bank and telecommunication at Comcast and at insurance, uh, Travis insurance company. So this is my family. My son is turning two years uh, next uh, November on Thanksgiving. And uh, to talk about today's agenda, so I will quickly start with threat actor motivations because we need to understand the cyber criminals motivation. So once we understand the motivations, then I will give you a quick background about the whole underground ecosystem, like how they have built their ecosystem. And then I will introduce to the SOC challenges, that is security operations challenges. And once I uh, provide about the challenges, I will quickly introduce to the Trellex XDR. And with the Trellex XDR, we can do a deep dive of what Trellex XDR does. And then why Trellex? So once we complete this session, I will give you a quick key takeaway as well from this session. So in this session, you will learn what are the five top things to mitigate uh, advanced threat actors from underground criminals. So these are the topics we'll be discussing for next 30 minutes. So as you, as you can see in this uh, slide, right? So there are a lot of APTs around. So in each APTs, right? It could be Fancy Bear or Mustang Panda or Mummy Spider. So every each APTs or every threat actors, there are human beings and cyber criminals who are hidden behind, right? So if you understand, where these cyber criminals or what kind of activities they've been performing or which location they are sending this traffic, right? So for example, as you can see, the uh, various uh, threat actors, right? It could be spider, uh, it could be bear from Russia, or it could be kittens from Iran, or uh, it could be tigers from India, uh, Vietnam from Buffalo, right? Or pandas from China. So various various threat actors from different part of the world, right? Like if you kind of understand where they are from, what kind of uh, threat actors, uh, what kind of activity they have been performing, or what is their motivation and why they're performing, right? It could be their uh, national motivation, right? Or it could be like an e-crime. Uh, those kind of things we need to understand, right? So for that, we need to understand the whole ecosystem. So as you can see here, this is the whole ecosystem. So it could be starting from services, distribution, and monetization. So I'll start about these services, like how their cyber criminal services are being spread across, right? So as you can see, the top one is ransomware, right? Like for example, they want to just compromise any enterprise. Maybe they can focus on uh, healthcare or banking industry, right? And uh, they will say, hey, like, now uh, uh, I have compromised like maybe uh, 10,000 endpoints and 2,000 servers, right? You pay me this much of Bitcoins or this much of digital currency and I'll send you the decrypt key. So we are seeing like a lot of uh, ransomware attacks like in past few, uh, few months. So yeah, I think on the services side, I think ransomware is the top one. And also access brokers, right? They've been using access brokers are the services like they're selling uh, credentials uh, maybe like valid cred credentials on dark web those kind of areas right and they're also having like phishing kits they're selling that as a service uh, this it could be like ddos attack tools right they're selling ddos attack tools as a service and also crime as a service for example maybe they they might want to hire someone hire someone to just do like mass shootout so they just uh, having those services like uh, online, right? And once they have these services, they are distributing using social network or instant messaging spam, right? It could be Telegram. They have like a centralized Telegram uh, groups where they're trying to distribute those messages, right? 
or maybe they want to purchase the traffic or uh, like distribute the traffic right like maybe for ddos as an example right so using various uh, methodology to distribute them it could be sp uh, spam email distribution or exploit kit development and they're just distributing them right so once they distribute they want to make money out of it right like what is their monetization like maybe uh, they want to get that money and fund it to some uh, criminals or some terrorists as well right so they're using this kind of monetization it could be like a ransom payments and extortion or wire fraud so these are the various methodology or the whole ecosystem about the cyber criminals okay so now we kind of understood like what kind of threat actors or where they are actually coming from and uh, we also understood the whole ecosystem of the cyber criminals right so now we need to understand how our Trellex XDR, we are teaming with human and machine to actually uh, elevate this uh, cops experience and also to uh, cyber criminals, right? So this is how we have been using technology. As you can see here, there are various data sources within your enterprise or even outside the world. There is a lot of data sources coming across internet, right? So these are the different various sources. It could be your Active Directory data source if it is in the enterprise. It could be your LastPass or it could be your uh, like a database or uh, antivirus like latest antivirus or syslog. All this data we are feeding that into machine and tools which integrate. When I say machine and tools, it could be your SIM, right? SIM was the one which, which was collecting that data. SIM is security incident event management. So once this collect the data, there is a bunch of analysts. It could be SOC level one, level two, or level three team who are constantly having eyes on glass and monitoring them for good versus bad, right? And then they had this concept called SOAR and case management where SOAR does the automation part and with the case management, right? So now when I say about human and machine teaming, what we did is, on the machine and tools which integrates the whole security ecosystem, we call it as tool integration part. And then on the other side, on the humans where SOC level one, level two, level three, forensic investigations, right? Like they're the team, they're uh, doing like threat hunting for 24 bar sun. We kind of call it as security operations using insight and actions. And then they want to automate that with SOAR and case management with automation and orchestration. So this is how we started uh, creating that human and machine teaming, right? So with that, we bring this concept called XDR. XDR is extended detection response. What does XDR does? As I was mentioning about human and machine teaming, XDR will integrate the data, right? It integrates various data from uh, it could be your antivirus, it could be your endpoint security, it could be your network uh, IDS IPS data, right? And then correlates it. So it will correlate to understand what is good and what is bad. Once that correlates, it contextualizes the data and alerts from multiple security preventions, right? As I mentioned, it can be from endpoint security or it can be from network security or it could be from cloud security. We get every data into our XDR right and then correlate them and alert what is good and what is bad so once we alert we have the detections in the xdr with the detection we also have a response components like we not only detect we will also we'll also respond to that particular uh, ad threat this is the whole concept of xdr so in this slide you will actually see how this xdr works right as i mentioned like a lot of events coming from endpoint security or network security or your email security or it could be our data protection, right? When I say data protection, it is data loss prevention. So if there is any confidential data like SSN or P, uh, PCI or PII data leaving your environment, like going outside of your environment from your endpoint, leaving, going through the network and going to the cloud, right? So your data is just going outside and you need to monitor uh, 
who has been sending that data or like is there any insider attackers who are stealing that data to make money from outside world right so and we also injured third party data sources uh, into our xtr x console so what does that do so once we injure the data we have this cross product and cross event correlation as i mentioned right we are not only injecting the endpoint security or like network security like we inject various security ecosystem so now we take the data and correlate like with the cross product right for example let's say there was a phishing uh, email which i sent to a user and user has clicked it right uh, without uh, knowing there was a malicious things was hidden in that url or maybe in that attachment so now as a saw currently we need to investigate right so with the xtr what it does is it will say hey like i have a email log which says user actually clicked it and also it will get the data from endpoint right which machine did he click it did he click it from his phone or did he click it from enterprise laptop right so it will get that information and it will say hey how many other machines was he accessing at that particular time right and then it will also collect your ids and ips data now to understand hey when he clicked it these are the c2c he has uh, communicated with these are the traffic right and then with our dlp we will see hey these are the exact confidential data has been sent out successfully to this domain right so this is how it will correlate with other uh, tools okay once it correlates and alerts to our soc level 1 or level 2 or level 3 team right it will also give us a playbook automation you can say hey if it is like more than 10 machines going to this particular malicious domain you can actually quarantine this devices until our soc level 2 or level 3 investigate them right or maybe if there is a forensic uh, uh investigation has to be done we can do that right so those kind of playbook automation you can create that and then we also have threat prioritization you can say hey there could be like 10 severity 1 or 2 severity 2 like which one would you like to pick it up and uh, investigate right those kind of threat prior prioritization we have done right for example uh, ransomware or ddos or phishing right we kind of understand what kind of threat we need to start investigating them with that we also have guided response so when i say guided response like i was giving you a quick example right when a user clicked on the phishing link so in the guided response on the other side as i mentioned about human and machine taming we also want to guide our soc level 1 level 2 and level 3 team to actually investigate these alerts so we have that kind of capability with the guided response and we also mitigate the response right so uh, we make sure we resolve the threats like when we see them we kind of resolve resolve the threats as well so this is the complete ecosystem of the xtr like this is how it works so on the next slide let me show you the x console right as i mentioned uh, xtr we'll have this x console so we have a core engines where it it collects data from different different platforms and then we have a data lake right so for example let's say we have a hipa for hipa compliant some hospitals they have to store data more than a year right or maybe more than 2 years so we use this data lake to actually store the data you can do like an historical uh, uh, historical search as well on the data and also you can do like a real time with our xtr right and also that data we do collect uh, we have a team called advanced research center so within that team uh, they do like product research they have like threat intelligence capability right as i was mentioning about threat intelligence so when i talk about when i talk about earlier uh, about the different attacks coming from various regions on the world so we collect the data from different isac it could be a threat intelligence platform from nh isac or fbi or csa right we collect different different uh, threat intel data and we make sure we inject that to like our endpoint security it could be your data security but we take actionable items on it right when we get this kind of threat intel so for example let me give you an example for example uh, let's say uh, there was this bank uh, who is going under ddos attack and uh, there was another hospital uh maybe like uh, two days back they had a ransomware attack right 
So now these bank and this particular hospital, they will send that IOCs, indicator of compromises, to a Intel, uh, to a Intel sharing platform, ISACs, right? It could be your uh, financial ISAC or it could be your health, uh, uh, health, uh, health ISAC, NH ISAC, right? So these ISAC or maybe FBI, CSA, so we collect that data and we take actionable items. So for example, we'll say, hey, this particular hospital saw this ransomware. These are the IOCs. We found it on your environment. Do you have any known IOCs, right? If you find any known IOCs, what are the action you have to take? We will actually perform. We will do a query from EDR telling that, can you see how many hosts is infected? How many devices are infected for this ransomware? Do we actually have any detection for this particular ransomware, like a black hat or anything which I showed you uh, earlier, right? A uh, spider or anything. Same thing goes with bank as well. Maybe if bank had like a DDoS attack and we want to see if there is any traffic to that, that particular IOC, uh, IP addresses, right? So we take action out of this threat intel, okay? And then we want to mitigate that particular threat. For example, when I say, hey, I found a ransomware uh, hash on your environment itself, right? Maybe like 10 machines has this particular hash value. We can quarantine those uh, hashes or maybe we can quarantine that particular 10 devices to an isolated environment and we can keep monitoring them. So those kind of actions we can take through our XDR. And also, as you can see, there is a bunch of uh, team with uh, data scientists do like machine learning and artificial intelligence modeling on this particular data lake to build different use cases. And we also have like a research engineering team uh, who is always doing an advanced threats. And to give a uh, additional focus on XTR, right? As I mentioned earlier, it's a unified experience for our analyst or like anyone who is using XTR. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have like automated alert prioritization built in with our XTR. And also within the XTR, we have that whole threat intelligence program, which has been built in actionable threat intelligence. And uh, I think previous I did mention about the guided investigations also, like how uh, it will actually guide for SOC level one or level two or level three, like what kind of steps you have to take when you see this alert, like phishing alert or when you see ransomware alert, which is high priority, what should uh, SOC level one has to do, what level two has to do, what kind of forensic data he has to collect, uh, what kind of information he has to see to mitigate this data. So these are the different guided actions uh, we have built in. And also not just the guided actions, right? We want XDR to actually perform the action. That's when like the AI part comes in, right? So automated and uh, accelerated responses. So these are the various response we kind of uh, take to mitigate these threat bad actors. So this is, uh, I think uh, on the agenda, I did mention about deep dive with the Trellex uh, XDR. So these are the couple of use cases, right? As you can see here on this first, on this particular slide, try in a gen AI model. So this is not like we are doing, like as you know, everyone knows about chat GPT now, right? But what we are doing is we are prompt engineering whatever data we have on our Trellex, like it could be your threat intel data, or it could be your endpoint, network, DLP, or cloud. We have so much of data. So with that data, we build a context or a background, right? And with that background, we instruct telling that, hey, when you see this, this is what you have to do. And this is how you mitigate this particular ransomware threat or this particular DDoS threat or this particular phishing threat, right? We give instructions and we have built those instructions. And once we have those instructions, the XDR actually performed, right? It will tell, hey, these are the tasks I have to do it. And it will make sure to do the task and respond to the uh, threats to mitigate them. Right. Apart from that, we also have uh, uh, very similar to chat GPT kind of model with our uh, Trellex XDR. So you can actually ask a question to our Trellex XDR, like telling that, hey, I saw this particular data since I mentioned about the data lake. Since we have that data, uh, you can actually chat with our Trellex XDR telling that, hey, um, I'm looking uh, uh, 
this data and maybe for a week uh, I'm looking a lot of false positive. Can you see like what's happening and let me know if I have to lower the severity, uh, if I have to uh, mark this particular source or destination uh, IP or port name as false positive. So XDR has that capa capability to actually look into that data through LLM and perform that action, right? So that's what uh, it's showing in this particular slide. And also in this slide, as you can see, we can automate the task. Like you can automate the EDR task, right? So in EDR, you can say, hey, I got this threat intel. And you, you can say, feed it to our uh, uh, LLM, very similar to chat GPT via APIs, right? And as I mentioned earlier, I found this threat intel, maybe malicious hash values. Can you go search it? Or uh, maybe I found this particular uh, uh, IP addresses. Can you go look for any connections in my network for like last 20 days or any active connections? Those kind of tasks you can perform and you can define a playbooks here, right? And it performs all this task and it will update in our UI. So this is how the XDR has been built on the back end. So I want to give you guys like a quick uh, depth about Detail XDR. And with this, I uh, uh, I want to say like there is a key takeaways, right? Like five key takeaways, I would say, to stop the bleed uh, and also to mitigate advanced threats from uh, underground criminals. So these are the top five uh, key takeaways, I would say. So first one is secure your enterprise, right? When I say secure your enterprise, it could be defense in depth approach. It could be your endpoint security or remote browser isolation or network security. You have to build your security in defense in depth concept right that's the first uh, key takeaway and the second one i would say 1 10 and 60 be proactive right uh, so this model is called 1 10 60 that is 1 minute to identify and you need to investigate that within 10 minutes and remediate that within 60 minutes so this is the model we uh, we kind of do it 1 10 and 60 and also have next generation prevention from our Trellex, right? So Trellex has like a lot of machine learning and uh, AI real protect uh, concept to actually prevent the data, prevent your threats like modern threats, right? So I would recommend uh, using the next gen uh, uh, prevention from our Trellex team. And also within your, uh, within any uh, uh, enterprise, right? I would recommend them to perform purple assessments, right? For example, Within a cybersecurity team in an organization, right? There could be security uh, operations team or SOC who are always 24 bars on monitoring the threats, or it could be your engineering team, your architect team, or maybe your uh, boundary protection team, data loss prevention team, right? So, what I would recommend is combine all these teams and have a purple assessment, right? So, bring a, a team who can actually do uh, red teaming, right? He can say, hey, like I'm trying to compromise your Active Directory data. You are supposed to see these event IDs. Can you uh, confirm are you seeing these event IDs? Or I'm trying to compromise this particular endpoint. Is your antivirus catching them, right? You need to validate before uh, anything malicious is happening, right? So this is how a purple assessment happens. And I would recommend uh, having this kind of purple assessment practices in your environment. And the last key takeaway is, you need to know your adversary. So that's the last uh, key takeaway I would uh, recommend for this session. Uh, with this, I will stop uh, the session. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thank you. And uh, it was a great session. Thank you. Thank you very much.